Hey there, Advanced Math. So we spent a good three days working on finding the area of right triangles and parallelograms. Um, today I want to move on to triangles that are not right triangles, finding their area. So go ahead and make this the title of your next page, and when you have done so, please close your notebook and concentrate with me until we get to the redo. So let me give you a quick reminder about formulas here. Formulas are going to be important today. So first of all, triangle. Uh, we only dealt with these right triangles. And if this was, say, 3, and this was, say, 5, and then this was, say, 7, we took that right triangle and we duplicated it in... These are pretty bad rectangles. We duplicated it into a rectangle, right? And that rectangle was had a base of 5 and a height of 3. And we know the formula for a rectangle is base times height. And we said, all right, well, if that's 5 and 3, this 7 didn't even really matter. And we said, all right, well, then the area of each triangle would be half of that, right? The whole rectangle was 15, 3 times 5. And so each triangle would be half of that, 7 and a half, 7 and a half. So we either said we would take base times height and divide it by 2, or we said we would take base times height and multiply it by a half. Same thing, um, doesn't really matter which one, same function. For a parallelogram, if this was 5 and this was 3, and let's remember we needed the height became a big deal on this one, so we kind of said, all right, we also needed to know how tall it was, like from the base straight up to the top. So say that's 2. Because what we ended up doing for the parallelogram was saying, well, if I take this piece and move it over here on a parallelogram, I just end up with a rectangle. This is the 3, uh, and this is the 2. And the rectangle is easy to find the area of. It's 5 this way, and it's 2 this way. And so the area of the parallelogram was the same base times height as the rectangle. Because if you look, this has a base of 5 and a height of 2. And if I kind of change it back into, into the parallelogram that we started with, you know, it has the exact same dimensions. It has a height of 2. And a base of 5. So rather, I can just not go through the effort of moving that and just say, well, it's base 5 times height 2, even though it's that weird shape, because I can turn it into a rectangle with the same dimensions as that parallelogram. And this is going to be a biggie today. So remember, for a parallelogram, even though it's not shaped like a rectangle, it has the same base times height formula as a rectangle, because we can turn it into one. That's going to be a big deal today to keep in mind. So let's look at some non-right triangles. Let's say I wanted to look at this triangle. 5 inches, 6 inches, 2 inches. There's no right angle. So I can't just turn that into a rectangle particularly easily if you want to use your mind and imagine it. Um, so remember, just like with a parallelogram, I want to draw this in because the height is going to matter. The height is how tall it is from the base to the tallest point. So that I can tell that's more than two, so why don't I just say that's two and a half? Be better to measure it. But also I've got this triangle now, five, six, and two. And my rectangle strategy doesn't work because if I just draw a rectangle here, well, I haven't really doubled it because I didn't account for that part. I didn't make a rectangle. I've still got this slanted side. Can't do that. But for a non-right triangle, I am still going to do the same strategy of doubling it. It's just that when I double it, watch what happens. I won't be able to double it into a rectangle. I'm going to just copy and paste that. Now I've got two of them. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up, I'm going to do, I'm going to erase everything but the five on this one. We won't need it in a sec. I'm going to turn this duplicated, this doubled um, triangle. So I'm going to take it all. And I'm going to line up the 5 inch side on this one with the 5 inch side on this one. I'm going to try to like, oh, I did a good job there. 
And when I do that, what have I made? So if I double the triangle, I made a parallelogram. See how that worked? And I know how to find the area of a parallelogram. We just talked about that, right? It, to find the area of the parallelogram, all I need to know is this base times height formula. So if I come back to my triangle, Looking at this parallelogram, I know the base. The base is the side it's sitting on. So I'm going to write area of a parallelogram is base times height. I know that one. So this one has a base of 6 and a height. Remember, this is not the height. That's at an angle. The height is straight from the base to the top. So it has a height of 2 and a half. So the area of the parallelogram is 6 times 2.5, which is 15. So if that, if that whole parallelogram, I'll put P for parallelogram, if the area of the parallelogram is 15, well, the original triangle was half of the um, parallelogram. So that triangle, if the whole thing's 15, well, then the area of the triangle is half of it. It's seven and a half. And you'll notice all I did, I took the base times height formula. The area of the parallelogram was base times height. And I divided it by two or multiplied it by one half. It has the exact same formula as the right triangle did. The right triangle was easier to figure out why, because we made a rectangle, and rectangles are really easy to find the area of. But it turns out I can turn a right triangle into a rectangle. I can turn a non-right triangle into a parallelogram. But parallelograms and rectangles have the same formula. They use this same base times height formula. And then, so the triangle is still just half the base times the height. Base times height divided by 2. So I can double it, find the area of the parallelogram, and divide it in half. Let's do one together. Let's do a good old equilateral looking triangle for you. <clears throat> so go ahead and you notice, draw this equilateral triangle. Uh, let's say this is an equilateral triangle with a, each side is say 15 centimeters. So to find the area, Let's follow some steps. So one, um, double it into a parallelogram. So I'm going to do that with my little um, gizmo here. You're probably just going to want to see what it looks like and draw it. So make sure you've got your original triangle drawn. I'm going to move it over a little bit and duplicate it. And what I'm going to do, I need to line up a like side. This is easy with this one. I need to line up a 15 centimeter side with another 15 centimeter side. Um, before I do that, I probably need to tell you the height. Don't I? The height's going to be important here. So if I look back at my original one, the height, that's this. Remember, the height goes straight from the top to the base. So that's going to be a little shorter than this. Let's just say that's 12 centimeters. Okay. And so I'm going to erase, just so it doesn't get too confusing looking. These are duplicates. I'm just going to erase these 15s. Otherwise, it's going to be 15s all over the place. So I duplicate it. I double it into a parallelogram. So it's going to look like this. I need to just take a an exact match side and line them up. So... Give me a sec. I'm going to try to line up. I said they were all 15. I have to make sure. I don't know that they actually were. So I have to line up the same side with the same side. So there you go. That's pretty good. So I dropped that right there. Now I've got two identical triangles that make this parallelogram. Right? So now find the area of the parallelogram 
using area equals base times height. So remember, not, you know, tricky, this isn't the height here. So the base is what it's sitting on. The base is 15. And the height is how tall it is from bottom to top, not the slant, but this thing here, so times 12. And 15 times 12. is 180 square centimeters and say well if this whole thing is 180 then each triangle is half of that so then divide by 2 so then half of 180 is 90 cubic centimeters and so what ends up happening is the formula is the same Doesn't seem like it should be the same as the right triangle, but the formula for the triangle is base times height because of the parallelogram. That's base times height, and we only want half, so it's base times height divided by 2, or 1 half times the base times the height. Either way. And so it ends up working the exact same way as a right triangle. The right triangle we doubled to a rectangle, and did half. This we double into a parallelogram and find half, and that's how it works. So here's kind of your steps to do it, or here's your formula. Either way. Hope that makes sense. That's a little tricky, and we just did two. Um, if you need to go back and watch the I do or the we do again to really get a handle on this, I would love for you to come to class tomorrow really, <coughs> excuse me, really feeling like you had a good grip on this. Um, but once you got it and you've written it down and you feel like you understand it, you're all set. And we will give these two a try together when you get there. All right. That'll do it. See you then.